these children are now becoming change agents within the community. There's a program that's working on gender with boys and transforming how they see themselves and their role in, in upholding gender equity. And these are young teenagers who are now going out there within advocating and enrolling people into saying, how can we be more gender equitable in our slum? You know, um, these ideas and have now been taken into the, the government school. And there's a, there's a whole transformational process happening in the government school with the government school teachers. You know, and subsequently, the uh, in, a, in a sense, one of the people who was leading uh, this program in Zensa moved on to head up a public private, and she's one of the people who've done your uh, the, the workshop with you, Monica Ruchi, um, uh, is now leading heading up the public private, a uh, very unique public private partnership uh, called the Pune City Connect, and has again brought these ideas into that work as well. So there, we're looking at livelihoods with young. Uh, with uh, with youth in a sense, but the underpinning of that livelihood, pro that entire program is like for young people to discover their agency and then identify what are their aspirations. And this livelihood program is is there to help them then uh, realize that, as opposed to what traditionally happens with livelihood programs and um, in. Um, in India is that, you know, if you've come from a slum, then, okay, you can weld and you can do, you know, you can, uh, you can drive, a, uh, you can become a driver or a welder or whatever. You can't aspire to be an animator, for example. You can't aspire to set up your own dance studio. You know, and our whole thing was, if, if that's the aspiration, how does the program then come in and support their aspirations, you know? So these are some of the things that happened, at least the very concrete things that I saw happen once, once this work was actually um, once this approach was introduced and people discovered their own agency, you know, to kind of um, imagine and create action, I mean, imagine and lead action, a uh, change. Um, similarly, I think in, um, if I look at the work that we're doing with Citizens for Peace now, that when we looked at this whole idea of peace talks and these workshops and recognizing that there's such power in creating spaces for people to have transformational conversations, and that that led to, you know, a colleague of mine, a colleague of mine and I working today with um, uh, within a, a film school where we're training, we're working with uh, young script writers, you know, who are training to be uh, script writers uh, in the film industry and saying, how can you, uh, and looking at them leading, in a sense, being transformational script writers, you know, that who will bring in issues of justice, peace, um, equity, equality, and uh, those that they feel strongly about, giving them the tools and frameworks by which they can actually um, weave those narratives, weave them into, weave these into their narratives, weave them into creating new heroes, perhaps, you know, uh, new icons, perhaps, uh, that will allow for a larger society kind of mindset, or rather at least seed new ideas within society in the context of shifting mindsets, you know. Uh, so that's, that's the have, other uh, one in prison. Lovely, lovely. Um, so we will, we will join our listeners, Bervin, after a short break. This has been truly inspirational. Sure. Thanks. Are you a game changer? Do you care about creating a vibrant future for Humanity Planet? If you care, you'll choose to engage in strategic action in order to transform the realities of today for generating a thriving planet. Find out how you can do this. Read the award-winning book, Radical Transformational Leadership, by Dr. Monica Sharma. This book is a systemic exploration of how to work with and transform the interlocking circumstances contributing to the complex problems we're facing. There's a chance of achieving a world that manifests peace, equity, and well-being for everyone. And this work offers the readers the creative ways and means of contributing to such a world-changing agenda. We live in a world battling for peace, threatened with violence and inequality being justified as both means and ends, sometimes disguised, packaged, and branded differently. This self-destructive worldview is dominated and backed by spurious arguments for leadership based on the idea of supremacy of race, religion, or culture, or of money. 
Monica's Counter, a perspective drawn from contemporary idiom, is based on experience and conviction. It shows that leadership can be shaped with equality, freedom, justice, and where means and ends are rooted in the transformatory power of human compassion. Described in her award-winning book, Radical Transformational Leadership. Let's explore this transformatory power of human compassion together. Join us for the program with Dream Vision 7 Radio Network twice a month on Tuesdays at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern and every Saturday at 6 a.m. Eastern. Share this information widely. Enroll people who want to make a difference. Dream Vision 7 Radio Network hosts many programs that unite humanity, sourcing our love. We are happy to be back with you again, Bhavan Parma and I. And we wanted to summarize a few points. And I'd like you to begin, Pervin. What would you like to share as takeaways for our listeners? So I think for me, some of the key takeaways, I think for me, first of all, I think coming to the radical transformational framework and, and work, actually, uh, uh, I just discovered this framework, as I say, to hold all the you know, pieces of the social change puzzle together, you know, um, and I, but it was much more than just about my work. I think it, it's been deeply transformational for me personally, you know, uh, because for me, it's literally become like the three circles of life, you know, where it's really about being, thinking, seeing and doing things that are deeply interconnected, you know, and recognizing that they're, they're inter- interconnected and uh, they operate simultaneously. And therefore, it's kind of, it's been, it, it, it's, it's been become a way of life for me, uh, more than just my work. And it's therefore, you know, I, you know, I've done a little, I, I talked about a senior citizen choir, and I know that I was going to volunteer there. And traditionally, I would probably have just gone and done a singing session. But because of this work, I think, and because it's so deeply within me, I, I went in and I recognized that song was a way of uh, inspiring a group of senior citizens who seem to have come into that home with this picture that, oh, we've just come here and we're waiting to die, basically. And to kind of inspire them to life again, to recognize that they, as long as they're here and they're on the planet, they have something to contribute and they're, they're special, they're unique. And we've just used song through that and then started this choir. And now, you know, we've done in five years, we've done some 13 concerts. Uh, and they've inspired actually other people to go out and uh, other seniors to say, oh, OK, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's not uh, the end of my life. As long as I have life, there's hope, you know. So I think that came from just this becoming part of my personal life. Uh, but in a work context, I think for me, I've really seen this as a, meta frame, you know, where it, uh, there are so many, I've worked with different frameworks or different, in, sorry, different instruments or tools or processes. But this was the first framework that for me held all these together and that one could integrate these different approaches and tools and templates, you know, in a kind of coherent transformational whole, you know, and that, that allowed in a sense, really focus strategic transformational action and whether from design and action. And so that was, I think, the, uh, the other key piece, the key takeaway that I've had. And I, I would say that to anybody who is on a board or a CEO or, or leading change, that it's vital, vital to look at all these three domains simultaneously. Uh, and I think lastly, in the context of what I'm seeing in the world around me, whether it's in India, we have this huge corruption, the, the issue of corruption, you know, um, the Me Too campaign that's coming up, that it, it's, it's, it's impossible, I think, now for any organization, particularly, to be able to say this is the work that we do outside, you know, and uh, we, we are we're very committed and we are, we're passionate and whatever outside, but internally, we'll have a different set of values. They, it's just not possible. So I think that that in, and, and it's getting and, and in a sense in as those whether it's the Me Too campaign that's kind of exploding even within the development sector, you know, and it's 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 uh, damaged the credibility of so many excellent organizations that and secondly, in when we don't integrate values into our strategic action, uh, we see that incongruence in the work or the, the work basically, it's, it's so easy for the work to kind of veer away or veer off track. 
And so in both these cases, I think it becomes vital for us to really be able to integrate these three domains of, of, of our values of shifting systems, creating new pa patterns and solving problems simultaneously in real time. Thank you, Pervin. You know, the points you raise are so vital. I look at it that way too. You know, for me, this work of, about personal growth and professional growth and applying these tools are about that. And secondly, to me, the conscious full spectrum frame is a meta frame. And as I worked with it, with different sectors around the world, I found that people resonated with it. And it allowed us in very, very different ways to integrate what we do from a place of universal value. And I think it is this coherence and this congruence, this attunement that will create the change we wish to see. And yes, there is an opening today where we, we are looking at, at, you know, things that are incongruent with our values, corruption or the Me Too movement. And I know we need to design these movements differently. We need to design them not as polarized places, but mm. as spaces that can transcend polarity. And I love the idea you had of script writers, Pervin, being mm. able to generate new icons of superheroes who can transcend dichotomies. What if we had superheroes in all our films, our theater, that will transform the realities of today where we are able to openly see the challenges of today. Thank you mm. so much. Welcome, Monica. Thank you for having me. And thank you for this work, really. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow.